Welcome to Navigating the Customer Experience. Want to improve your organization's customer service? Looking for insider tips to knock your customer socks off? Then you're in the right place. Here's your host, Yannick Grant. Welcome to Navigating the Customer Experience. On today's episode, our guest is Josephine Campbell. Josephine is a founder of Campbell Company, a top leadership consulting firm for multinational companies. Campbell inspires and coaches leaders, teams, and talents in large organizations such as McDonald's, Deloitte, Maersk, Novo Nordisk, and Carlsberg Group. Her approach combines the practical and the pragmatic. A four-time jiu-jitsu champion, she's particularly interested in developing personal leadership in difficult circumstances, such as is often the case in modern work life. So without further delay, sit back, plug your earphones in, and let's jump right into this conversation with Josephine. Welcome, Josephine. Thank you very much. I'm happy to be here. Awesome. Now, Josephine, even though we read a short description about our guests, we always like to give our guests an opportunity to share a little bit about their journey. So could you share with our listeners a little bit about your journey, how you got from where you were to where you are today? Yes. So when I was a teenager, I was quadruple national champion in jiu-jitsu. It's a Japanese martial art. And and for the last many years, I've been coaching and developing executives individually and in groups. And at some point in my practice, I have a background in business. You know, I have run businesses myself. I've been in business for plus 25 years. I've also been teaching at business school. And at some point, quite early on, actually, um, in my endeavor of supporting the executives that I was helping in the best possible way, I realized that some of the techniques and practices that I brought with me from the jiu-jitsu practice actually had a huge effect when working with executives in modern work life. Because being an executive is quite demanding especially in modern work life it takes a lot of energy it it requires for you to stay mentally clear under difficult circumstances it's it's quite normal to be under a lot of pressure just like as when you are in a battle it's the same thing that happens to people when they feel threatened um, in a battle and when they feel threatened at work the circumstances might look different, but what happens inside people can be quite similar. And um, have you watched Karate Kid? I have. Movie? Yes. Uh, yeah. So you remember the Mr. Miyagi? I did. Wax yeah. on, wax off. So he he trains Karate Kid in how to be mentally agile, how to stay ready in a battle, right? So one thing is he, he trains the techniques, but he also trains how he is with himself. That's a lot of the movie. Remember, that's why he has to do the wax on, the wax on. And and it's it's the same for executives. It's It takes a lot of personal capacity to do the work they do. So that's how I came up across the methods that uh, I've, that I've written about and that I've helped executives put into practice. All right. Thank you for sharing. Now, in reading a little bit about your story, I notice a big part of what that you do focuses on the power barometer, right? So can you Mm -hmm. share with our listeners a little bit about that and um, how it is that you are able to implement, you know, what, what is the power barometer? Let's start there. Yeah, so the power barometer is an imaginary tool that anyone can apply personally, alone, individually, and in teams at work. So um, it's a way of checking in on your personal energy level. And checking in on your personal energy level is important because energy is the fuel of the brain. Your brain uses 20% of your personal energy. It's quite a lot because it's only the size of 3 to 4%. And if you're low on energy, your brain doesn't run 
very well. So if you're unaware of that, you're not capable of performing in the same way as if you have the self-awareness of where your energy is mm-hmm. here and now. And the same thing counts for what happens in teamwork. So one thing is that each and every one of us should take responsibility for our own personal energy, the personal energy that we bring to the table. But in a meeting, everybody should take responsibility for the energy at the meeting. So so tell me, have you ever been in a meeting where someone suddenly took all took out all the energy of the room? Yeah, that's happened quite a few times. Yeah, right? And what happens to productivity in, in, in such a case? It declines. Yep. Engagement. It declines. And reten yeah, and retention. It <laughs> if declines it happens as well. quite a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and performance. Does people come up with creative, innovative ideas? Do they solve difficult tasks when the energy is out of the room? No. Not so much, right? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, just being aware of personal energy, start to measure it, even if it's a subjective quantification. It it brings awareness to uh, energy and everybody's responsibility on the energy level. And that kind of behavior that will bring out energy of a room suddenly becomes unwanted. And for many reasons, that is good. All right. All right. So, so it's, it's, it's about balancing and it's about energy. Could you share with us, um, uh, three, maybe two to three approaches, tactics, tools that you can use to manage energy in work and life? Cause you know, we all have our personal life, but we also have our professional life. And how do we balance having energy in both so that, you know, either area is not getting diminishing returns? If if I may, uh, because you say personal and professional life, actually a point, a, a, a very important takeaway from my book is that business is personal. So there's there's a difference between private and professional life. So that is is in opposition. There's things that happens in your weekend, within your family, that's private. But And what happens at work, what you have to do at work, it's professional. But all of it is personal because it's you as a person who goes to work. It's you as a person who is leading, collaborating, communicating. It's you and I as people who are co- talking right now on this podcast. And we cannot take the personal aspect out of the equation. So so you, you cannot just um, put away anything but personal. And that's a key point also in you addressing the question, like what can you do to keep a high personal energy level? And first of all, and the most important thing is to be aware, to be aware of your own personal energy level. If you start noticing when your energy is high, when it is low, most people would start to care more about it and putting more attention into raising the energy. You will also have more insights about what drains you and try to do less of that. Things that give you energy. It could be work tasks, specific work tasks. You discover, oh, I get energy from this type of tasks or this type of meetings or working with these people, but those people drain me. And of course, at a workplace, you cannot always decide who you are meeting with and who you're not. But those relationships which are draining, can I ask you, if, can, you, can, you can you do something about it? Is there something you can bring to the table to improve that collaboration? I know plenty of good examples on how people have addressed bad working relationships and taking them to another level where they can do great work together. There are also situations where you have to avoid certain collaborations or certain tasks. If you're in a team, understand what type of task drains and gives different team members energy. Work division might gonna see more obvious. Um, And then there are the physical aspects, such as getting enough sleep, having a few breaks once in a while, actually just even micro breaks, a few minutes of rest. And rest is not looking at your phone or just answering email. Rest is 
you know, maybe closing your eyes or leaning backwards on your chair and letting go for a minute. Just these little micro breaks, they can have a huge impact on your energy level. We are not designed to be productive all the time. The organism, the biological human organism is designed to perform in circles, like in, in waves, you know, the energy, our natural energy will move upwards and downwards in, in iterations. So it would be normal that you have some downtime once in a while, at least not, not normal, natural. That's the difference. The normal is that people don't have any downtime, right? Isn't it? <laughs> All right. Thank you for sharing. Now, Josephine, could you also share with us what's the one online resource, tool, website, or app that you absolutely can't live without in your business? Mm. Well, <laughs> I will be reluctant to say, hey, if you go on my website, josephinecampbell.com, there's a section with freebies. And go there and grab whatever you think can make a difference for you. There are a, a couple of tools there and you can try them out. You can uh, write me if uh, you have any questions. And yeah, that's plug and play. Go check it out. Um, there's no software there. And uh, you ask like, what is the one software I can't live without? Right. You personally, like what tool? Um, it could oh, be teams. An, it could be an online resource. It could be an application <laughs> that you have on yeah. your phone or your computer. Yeah. What can you well, not live teams. without? <laughs> Teams. Okay, Microsoft Teams. Microsoft Teams because all my clients use, well, yeah, most of my clients use Microsoft Teams. Okay. And um, very often that's where we meet and engage. Great. great. So, yeah. Can you also that's share where with... I work. <laughs> great. Can you also share with us maybe one or two books that you've read recently or even maybe a book that you read a very long time ago, but it has mm -hmm. had a very big impact on you? Oh, yeah, 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 definitely. Um, that's a wonderful question. So um, what to tr choose from? There's so many wonderful books. I really, really love books. Well, I think Stephen Covey, The Seven Habits of Highly Efficient People. Mm -hmm. It's an old classic, right? Yep. And it's. I think it was the first book on personal leadership that got really big. And it was. it's from the 90s. So I was pretty young back then, mm -hmm. but I got, I got uh, really fascinated with the book and that the content of the book. I also started my first business when I was really young. I was 21 when I started my first business. So, you know, I needed a lot of help. Mm -hmm. I needed guidance on, on how to manage myself. And I found so, so much wisdom in that book. And I th actually think it's still valid. It's, it's old, but it still works. So I often recommend that book. Mm -hmm. um, I still do. Um, and then I think Brené Brown's Dare to Lead, that's another great book. It's, it's just a few years old. And I think she took leadership uh, books uh, in another direction. Writing a book that is very personal um, and that has some really nice contributions to how uh, leadership development is, is being perceived today. I really think she made a, a huge difference. Thank you, Brainy Brown. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Thank you so much. So we'll have the links to both of those fabulous books that you've mentioned um, in the show notes of this episode. Now, mm -hmm. can you also share with us, Josephine, what's the one thing that's going on in your life right now that you're really excited about? Either something you're working on to develop yourself or your people? Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, that's so much. So obviously there's the book, which is just coming out now. Mm -hmm. And I'm excited about sharing that with the world. And I, and then I've written the next one too. <laughs> and we're still working on the title. And uh, I'm excited about that one too. I've been, um, I've, I've written another kind of book. I've been quite creative and I'm, I'm also excited about finishing that one and, and putting that one out. So yeah, my, my books is, is part of my passion. I get up five o'clock in the morning sometimes to write just because 
I really feel like writing. Yeah. Perfect. I love it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, our listeners would have tapped into this episode and they would like to know how how they can find you online. Where can our listeners find you online? On josephinecampbell.com. And Josephine is spelled with an F and Campbell is spelled like the Campbell soups. Josephinecampbell.com. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Um, so before, and, go ahead. And and then, of course, on LinkedIn. I'm, I'm pretty active on LinkedIn, so feel free to connect with me there and, and uh, yeah, ping me or write me. And, you know, I actually really like to engage with people. So, yeah, that's also a way to approach me. Great. Now, before we wrap our episodes up, we always like to ask our guests, do you have a quote or a saying that during times of adversity or challenge, you'll tend to revert to this quote? If for any reason you got derailed or demotivated, this quote kind of helps to get you back on track. Do you have one of those? I I have um, not a quote, but an image. Do you know the myth of Sisyphus? It's, the, it's an old Greek myth. It's this man who is being... Um, judged by the gods to push a rock up a hill and every time he's up the hill the rock is falling down and he has to push it up again have, have, you, have you ever heard that tale i have not or can no. you imagine I can, can, can you imagine the picture I, I can't imagine the picture yeah so that's that feeling of this never-ending work and that things just keeps on being tough right and just after the Second World War, there was a French philosopher, Camus, who uh, elaborated a little bit on, on, on that myth. And he pictured Sisyphus um, looking at the stones on the mountains as he was pushing up, he was pushing the rock up the hill. And he would see the sun sparkle in some of the stones and it would be beautiful and his attention and his energy, his mind, his being would direct towards the beauty of those sparkles. And that would make the rock and himself feel lighter. And and that's what I try to do. I try to find just that little spark at, you know, at those times where it's really dark and it's tough and it feels like it's never going to end, mm-hmm. though we know it's going to end. You know, there's always light at the end of the tunnel, but sometimes it just doesn't feel like that. Sure. And I try to find these little sparks of light that beams and, and that can often just give a little more energy to get done whatever it needs to get done. All right. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you so much. I guess um, another way to look at that is um, the quote, this too shall pass, you know, mm-hmm. um, but you've, you've, you've kind of transformed it into an image, which is, you know, way more impactful because then it really focuses on what can you really do to navigate that space and recognize that at the end of the day, it will, you will overcome it. It may seem like it's going to last forever, but there is a solution somewhere down the line. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this too shall pass. It's a really beautiful quote. I, I like that one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> uh, now, now, now another one comes to my mind. It is the quote saying, everything is as it's supposed to be. Yeah. Kind of give some kind of peace at mind, right? Mm-hmm. If you if you don't try to fix anything or you know, if you don't try to struggle, if you just say, okay, things are as they're supposed to be. Somehow it's all going to make sense at the end of the day. It will. The puzzle will all fit. Mm-hmm. All right. Thank you so much, Josephine, for taking time out of your very busy schedule and hopping on this podcast and sharing all of these great nuggets and insights with us. A little bit about your journey, your new book that's coming out, um, the importance of, you know, preserving your energy and doing things that will lead to um, a more productive um, life, a more balanced life. So I think our, our listeners definitely would have gained great information great value from what you shared with us today so we just want to express our appreciation for you joining us on this podcast today thank you and yannick it was really nice talking to you and thank you for having me on your show awesome just want to remind our listeners you can follow us on twitter at navigating cx and feel free to join our private facebook group navigating the customer experience community until next time i'm your host yannick grant 
Thanks for listening. For more awesome resources to take your customer service game to another level, head over to navigatingthecustomerexperience.com. See you next time.